Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we've got a uh, wonderful chef extraordinaire and ex-student Freddie Forster with us. Uh, so Freddie, uh, just as a little bit of background, has, uh, was studying on the professional chef diploma and, uh, and he's left. We're going to just kind of go through his experiences of what have happened since he left college and how he's done competition work and where his journey's taken him and what he's up to now. So I'm going to hand across to Freddie. So he goes live. Uh, hi, Freddie, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, Perfect. Thanks everyone for tuning in and um, difficult time for everyone, obviously, but hopefully stuff like this can help us um, pass it in a positive way. Fantastic. So um, if you're uh, outside as an attendee, then you should be able to ask questions as we go along, which I'll uh, kind of host and manage for you. So you should have a little bubble uh, with question mark in the corner of it and you should be able to ping those across and I'll be able to ask them. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of kick off a little bit. So Freddie, when did you uh, when were you a student at uh, Westminster? God, that's a tough question, that one, isn't it, really? Um, I must have been a student probably. Let's have a look now. Probably about 1990, I'd say, you know. OK. Yeah, about 1990. It must have been around that, yeah. Yeah. yeah around that time, yeah. So so when you so you did the full three year diploma? Yeah. So I did. Um, you know, three year course, obviously there I did. Um, my first two years was seven six one and two sitting guilds. And then um, in the second year, I actually was thinking of actually leaving college, actually, in after my second year. Um, but after talking to a couple of lecturers and um, stuff like that, and just my own gut feeling, I decided to stay and do a further chef diploma. And probably that probably was the best decision I actually ever made, actually, you know, um, looking back on it um, in, in terms of my my time at Westminster actually. Brilliant. That extra year. Okay, so um, what did you do straight after that? What was your So your basically first after job? my yeah, after my third year, you know, um, I went straight to work for um, Raymond Blanc, you know, at the Manuel Cat Saison. Um, I was lucky enough in my third year to spend three weeks there um, for work experience, you know, um, toward the end of my third year at Westminster. And, um, you know, I got a chance to experience firsthand what it was like in the kitchen of that type. Um, he was someone I really wanted to work for. So I got the chance to go and work for him on a sort of a stage basis while I was at college. So straight after that, I got offered a job to start full time, you know, in the summertime of, uh, I think, 91, actually. OK, brilliant. So um, would you say Raymond's had a huge influence on your career? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I always say this when people ask me this question, you know, all the chefs that I've worked for have had a real massive part to play in my career, I think, to date, you know, I think maybe some more so than others. I think, you know, Michel Blanc, you know, really obviously was the first chef that I, I really sort of worked for on a full time basis. Um, and, you know, working in a place like that, obviously, we know, the reputation that it has, you know, and it's had for a long, long period of time. You know, he was a massive influence on me and, um, and, and just instilling it into myself the love that I have for cooking, really, you know, because the man is so passionate about what he does. Um, so he was a big influence on me, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Um, and have you ever, has your job ever taken you working abroad or anything like that? Yeah, I've worked a num um, abroad on a num number of occasions, actually. I mean, I've, I've done numerous things overseas with various chefs in terms of like, sort of like promotion and stuff like that. But in terms of me physically working myself for a period of time, you know, I've worked in um, Barbados at the Sandy Lane Hotel for a couple of years. You know, I've worked in Dubai also um, for a couple of years as well. Um, so there was a two places that I had worked, you know, and spent, you know, a good bit of time working out there as a professional chef and getting immersed in the culture and everything as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so do you, would you say that has been a, a positive thing in your career and you'd recommend experiencing yeah. that? I mean, it definitely was positive for me because, you know, my, my first head chef job actually was actually in Barbados, you know, um, you know, at Standard Inn Hotel. So, you know, that brought a different type of challenge for myself, working with a different sort of um, type of people in terms of their mindset, um, in terms of the culture. Um, and I learned a lot about myself, basically, in terms of, 
you know, um, management skills, how to adapt my skills to, you know, certain situations. Um, you know, and, you know, you get to learn a lot about the culture and the people there and, and just what to expect of being <coughs> sorry, in, another, in another country and working a specific way. So I would recommend it to people to explore and challenge themselves to different situations. Yeah. <coughs> Okay. I mean, certainly I'd recommend visiting Barbados. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I stayed down the coast from Sandy Lane. I couldn't afford Sandy Lane, so. Well, no, I mean, I spent most of my time actually <laughs> sitting on the beach, actually, I think, doing my time there. So I certainly recommend it just for that alone. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so um, how would you just, what kind of um, star food do you think you create? What kind of star food? Yeah. Star food. Would I create all my favourite star food, or what? Well, so whatever. I mean, what's your favourite thing to cook? Well, I think in terms of cooking for myself, in terms of like star food, um, a lot of people have this misconception about a lot of chefs who maybe work in sort of high end places. That when they go home, they kind of like always eating that type of sort of high end food, you know. But me personally, um, I'm a very simple kind of eater. You know, I love pasta. You know, um, I love fish and seafood. Um, so I cook a lot of grilled fish for myself, you know, my family and friends, you know, um, I love, you know, making sort of different compound type of salads. I think over the years, my cooking style and what I like to eat has really changed a lot over the years, you know, and I'm a big sort of fish eater, a lot more sort of healthier eater now than yeah. ever before, I'll probably say. Um, but I love grilling. I love grilled food. I like the smokiness of that, especially when I'm at home. And um, I, I just like that kind of feeling, you know, when I'm having sort of food. So anything star food we're based around sort of grilled food, grilled yeah. fish, that kind of thing. Okay. And um, what do you think your best meal you've ever had is? The best meal I've ever had um, in terms of, you know, it's a tough question, actually, because, you know, I haven't eaten out in, you know, lots and lots of restaurants, you know, and, you know, sometimes, you know, the most simple of things can be the, the most memorable thing that you've ever eaten, you know, I mean, um, I've been to um, Lyle's restaurant in Shoreditch um, quite a few times, especially in the earlier years when it was when it first started. And um, I'm a real, real big fan of how James Lyle actually cooks, you know, very simple sort of ingredients, um, real full of flavor, um, you know, and, and just real respect for the ingredients. Mm. But if I had to choose really, and you put me on the spot, you know, I ate at Stat Baines um, in Nottingham. Yeah. And, you know, some of the dishes that I had there, some of the best I've ever had, you know, in, in my time of, you know, experiencing, you know, um, restaurant cooking. Yeah. So I think every restaurant I've been to, like, you know, Tip Ton Claire back in the day, you know, I went there um, with Monsieur Blanc, actually, um, yeah. for lunch one afternoon. And we had a wonderful meal there. I remember the scallop dish with um, squid ink was phenomenal. I can still feel and taste it now. So there are dishes that I've had in various places that really stand out as opposed to one particular you know, restaurant. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so one of the big things that's uh, been a big part of your career has been competitions. Yeah. So uh, you you National Chef of the Year and uh, the Roos Scholarship. Yeah. So so what do you think, what a, what, what are the highlights of that and, and what influence has it had on you? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is that, you know, you know, I never sort of set out you know, when I first started my career, really, to sort of enter, you know, lots of competitions, you know, even though there were a lot out there for us chefs to sort of, you know, get ourselves stuck into. It was something that just sort of happened kind of like generically, really, you know. I mean, let's take the Roos Scholarship as an example. You know, I did a bit of research about it and I found that, you know, it obviously was one of the premier competitions out there. I looked at all the chefs who had sort of been in it and, and won that competition. I thought to myself, well, you know, if I could get involved in that and try and win that, it could open some doors for myself because at that time it was very hard to get into Europe, you know, into another restaurant in France or, or wherever, you know. Um, so, you know, it was more of a challenge to myself, ultimately, the Roos Scholarship competition. I, I actually entered it twice. Um, I entered it once when I was working for Gordon Ramsay, when I got to the final for the first time entering. Um, I, I wasn't successful, obviously, but then the second time when I did it about six years later, um, I had more of an understanding about myself as a chef, yeah. Um, I felt a lot more confident within my ability to, you know, um, to succeed. And it just kind of like turned out that way. I mean, you know, I always believe there's certain competition out there that can do a lot for your career. Root Scholarship being one, 
you know, um, obviously the national ship of the year. And I think, you know, me personally, I'm, I'm quite a competitive person anyway, as it goes. And I would like to sort of challenge myself more than anything else. Um, so the fact that I was able to sort of win these two titles um, for myself, you know, obviously was a big thing. And it's done a, a lot for me in my career. It's opened a lot of doors for myself. Um, you know, the Riz scholarship, for example, you know, I won this competition 20 years ago yesterday, actually, really. Yeah. And um, even up until now, you know, the Rue family still look after you. They look out for you. Um, so you are almost like part of their extended family. Mm. Um, and you, you you build up great camaraderie with all the other, you know, winners and, and you know, people who have been so associated with it over the years. Um, and, you know, I suppose in some ways, you know, I'll always go down the history of someone who's actually won it. There's not been many of us. You know, and, um, you know, it's something, it's a great title to have, you know, I think it's really helped my career in terms of opening doors, like I said, um, respect from the trade, um, yeah. you know, um, and also just sort of proving to myself that, you know what, you know, I must be able to cook a little bit if you can win these kind of things really at the end of the day. So all the hard work that I did many years ago um, hasn't been to, you know, for no reason. Perfect. Uh, so we're getting some questions coming from students now. Uh, yeah. So, um We've had one coming saying, how do you think the industry has changed since you first started? Um, certainly, in my opinion, you know, when I first went into the trade, I just, I personally feel very strongly about this, that, you know, um, the, a lot of the chefs going into the industry when I was at, at that time, we were hungry. You know, um, there was a real desire to really succeed almost at, at all costs, really. You know, we were prepared to, you know, start at the very, very bottom um, there was a very strict high, you know, you know, party system, you know, where you started as a second commie, then you had to work to, you know, first commie, you know, and you had to really work your way up the ladder to sort of, you know, um, get anywhere. And there was an incredible amount of respect, you know, that you would show to somebody who was more senior than you. OK. Yeah. Um, personally, I feel a lot of the time now, and not everybody, but a lot of the shows that I come across, you know, they really want to get up the ladder very, very quickly before they have the true base and the foundation in place. Um, college does wonderful things for sure, but that can only give you so much, you know, and um, I think, you know, you know, that due to the, you know, things like, you know, a lot of social media, a lot of like, you know, TV chefs now as well, a lot of chefs see that and think, you know what, I can be like that. And of course they can be, but they've got to remember, you know, a lot of hard graft does need to take place before you sometimes get to this sort of level really, or being exposed to certain things. So I just think that, you know, there's a lot more, desire and and patience to sort of learn your trade at a in those years i think personally learning your trade was very important as opposed to now everyone wants it quite quickly now and i think that's sometimes can be a bit of a stumbling block okay brilliant uh so uh, another question what's so mr stocker yes, is asking uh what your favorite classical dish is to cook and why um my favorite classical dish to cook probably would be um, lobster thermidor, um, simply because I, I love seafood. Um, I think it's a great dish that, you know, has stood the test of time. It will never, you know, go, go out of fashion. Um, it's a relatively simple dish to cook, but still, you know, it can go wrong, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just a, it's a real showstopper, you know, um, you know, any menu that I would ever be associated with in terms of a restaurant, what have you, I would love to have that on the menu as a, as a go-to dish because it's just okay. a, it is a classic. Brilliant. Uh, so another question, um, if you were ever to open a restaurant of your own, mm -hmm. uh, what would be the likelihood of you bringing some of the more traditional West African type food into the menu or do, or do you put that sort of thing down? Um, I will not potentially, you know, maybe use classic dishes onto the menu, but I would use elements of, of my of the cuisine, you know, yeah. whether it's certain ingredients like okra or cassava or plantain, um, certain types of cooking methods, whether it's cooked in a banana leaf, as an example that we do, you know, with certain things back in West Africa, Sierra Leone. So, it, you know, I wouldn't potentially per se do a particular dish. I may use certain ingredients and certain techniques more than more so than a complete dish in itself, really, you know, um, more. I wouldn't I don't like to use the word fusion, but elements of that basically so it's, it's more of using certain techniques and ingredients um, into the sort of cooking that I love to do and I've learned over the years really. Brilliant okay so um, if you were talking to uh, a young kind of 16 year old who was thinking about starting the, the three-year course what kind of advice would you give? Um, I would give uh, one you know you, you must be patient 
um, you know, coming into that, you know, that situation in terms of, you know, committing yourself for three years, you know, of, of study. There are going to be some difficult times, you know, um, but it's going to be an enjoyable time. So certainly exercise patience in terms of learning your trade. Um, certainly, you know, listen to your, um, your lecturers, you know, um, as much as possible. I think it's maybe something that I probably didn't do on some occasions. I was a bit of a rebel myself personally, you know, like to go off and do my own thing a lot of the time, really, you know. Um, so I certainly would steer them away from that kind of way, you know, stick with what you're being told and, you know, make sure you, you learn a true spectrum of the whole, you know, curriculum that, that, ha that has to be had to offer for you to yourself. Um, and really just, just enjoy your time, you know. I mean, one of the things that I really, you know, look back in my time at Westminster, I had a wonderful time, one of the best times of my life, you know, and, you know, I can clearly say that looking back on it now, you know, I met wonderful people, I was taught incredibly well, um, you know, it was a very professional environment, you know, I really had a wonderful time at Westminster, you know, and I think, you know, yes, it was hard work and um, you know, it was taxing at times, but, you know, if you love what you do, um, then that really shouldn't be an issue. So I certainly would say, you know, don't go there with any trepida trepidation, you know, go there to enjoy yourself and listen to what you're being told and persevere and, and just keep working hard because, you know, um, you, you will be successful after that. Yeah, brilliant. And so the majority of people who are kind of listening to this now, uh, they're obviously coming towards the end of their time with us and they're going to be graduating and moving on. So from from their perspective, what advice can you give to them that are about to leave? Uh, I think the first thing I would say is that, you know, you have to be very conscious and careful about where you decide that you really want to go and start your career. Um, I think, you know, sometimes I think when you start your career in the industry, um, it's really important to try to go to the best possible fit for you. Um, I think that's that's important. Some people get sort of, you know, wrapped up in, well, I want to go here, I want to go there because it, it's great. It's got a Michelin star, it's got two Michelin stars, all the rest of it. But you, you also got to go somewhere that suits your your style, your character, where you feel that you can progress, you can you can settle down and get into the um, the everyday life of being in a professional kitchen. You know, so I would employ them to um, spend a lot of time taking time to do that research to make sure that they try and pick the right place. If that means go in there for a stage like I did, if that means talking to your lecturers um, in detail about that, um, I think that's a very important process because the last thing you want to do is go somewhere that you just don't fit in or you don't feel comfortable and you're already on the back foot straight away. Um, so I would say really take time to think about where you really want to go and then when you do get there, um, just understand, you know, it's a process. Um, you're going to have to get your head down. Um, you know, I think cooking and, and restaurants have changed a lot over the years. So some of the things that maybe I may have experienced, um, they probably don't experience so much now. Um, so, you know, be prepared to work hard and, and learn your craft. Um, you must learn your craft. Um, mm. And that's something that, you know, I would always, you know, advocate, you know, you really have to learn your craft from the very, very beginning. Um, but, you know, coming from Westminster, you know, I, I know how it is there. Um, and how the how the colleges and what what they're being taught there. So um, they're already going to be leaving there, very very well skilled anyway. So um, that they're in, they'll be they'll be in good hands. Brilliant. Um, so that kind of nicely leads on to the next question, which is: Do you think there's a, a specific number of years you need to train to learn the basic basic kind of aspects of being a chef? Um, I think that's probably a little bit of a difficult question, really. I think it depends on a lot of different things, really. I mean, certainly during my time you know going to college for for, for on full-time basis for three years was really great for me you know i mean i used to go every day um you know in the first year in my second year i started to do a bit of part-time work in the evenings whilst working every day you know whilst obviously studying every day um so that really worked for me um i had friends who would go to um college one day a week and um you know spend most of their time in an establishment so you know, it, it can go either way, really, ultimately, really, um, to be quite frank with you. But I would personally say a good couple of years um, being in an institution where you're learning your trade, um, you know, should set you up nicely, you know, mm. especially if you're doing a bit of part time work here and there um, as well at the same time. But I certainly would recommend at least a couple of years um, of, of study um, before you sort of go out into the trade, feeling confident enough that you've got some tools behind you to do the job. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, what's the hardest job you've ever had? 
Oh, I mean, that's an easy question. I mean, certainly when I worked for Gordon Ramsay at the Aubergine, yeah. um, by far, by far, by far, was the hardest job that I ever had. Um, but in saying that, it was a hard job that I ever had from a physical and a mental point of view. Um, you know, the early hours, the relentless, you know, drive and just just the relentless of it all was, 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 was something else really for six days a week. Um, but it then became after a while the easiest job I ever had because I, I adapted to it, you know, somewhat, you know, and it was an enjoyable place to be. I really had a wonderful time there. Um, I was learning a hell of a lot, you know, um, met some wonderful people there, but certainly the hardest job I ever had there for sure in my career was no doubt was, was the aubergine all day long. Yeah. But do you think that was a positive influence? And well, it, that's what I'm saying. I mean, for me, yeah, yeah. it was a very positive thing. You know, I mean, I went straight to um, Gordon after I left the, the manoir with Cat Um Gordon had just opened up the aubergine about six months prior to me going there. So I actually was one of the sort of first members of staff really there, really, you know, with Marcus Waring, you know, Angela Hartnett, uh, Mark Askew, um, you know. So there was a very sort of small unit team there. Um, and um, it was a tough time. I remember the first three months, you know, um, even though I'd come from a very good background of, of the manoir after a couple of years, you know, um, I was kind of a little bit semi-prepared for it, but it was tough, you know, the first three months, you know, just getting used to the real intensity, smaller kitchen, um, really working by yourself a lot of the time. Um, it was a bit of a change from the hierarchy system that we had maybe at the manoir. But like I said, once you overcame, once I overcame that initial three months, you know, you know, it, it started to become a lot easier for myself, really, you know, I started to really sort of say, you know what, I can do this, you know, and, you know, I think when you love what you do and your passion, you want to get on, you just get your head down, you know, yeah. and that's, that's, that was my, 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 my mentality, just, just get your head down, mate. Perfect. Um, and how would you uh, like to see the industry change? Yeah, I mean, industry change, I mean, I would love to see a little bit more I think there's, I think this I can answer this in, in many many ways. You know, I think one of the things that I see within our industry now, and I don't know who's, I can't really sort of pinpoint it to anybody in particular, but a lot of the sort of basic skills have 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 been lost in our kitchens. You know, um, you know, I remember Westminster. We were taught how to do butchery, fishmongery. You know, and you know, on, on a weekly basis. You know, and you go to a lot of restaurants now, and you don't see a lot of that going on anymore. You know, a lot of all this meat is coming in already prepared fish coming in prepared so you know you a lot of the chefs you know don't have the opportunity to continue to hone their skills you know um, break down you know maybe whole animals you know or semi carcasses you know mm. um, because everything is coming in sort of now almost ready to go and the demand of 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 supplies and you know you know the owners wanting to get bums on bums on seats very very quickly sometimes can be to the detriment of the chef being within our, you know, actually doing the work, you know. So I would love to see us going back to sort of these basic skills that we learned when we were at college, you know what I mean, you know, um, so that you can really pass on your skills and you can really utilize the skills that you've had over the years, you know. Yeah. Um, I would love to see us go back to that somehow. Um, I certainly would like to see, you know, better pay across the board in our industry. I think it's got better, you know, um, in some cases, but, um, I think I would like that to be a little bit more consistent, you know, in um, in most establishments. Um, I certainly would love to see, you know, um, a better emphasis, you know, of, you know, having apprenticeships within within kitchens again, like I experienced a lot in my own time, you know, because I think that really helps mentorship, okay, and bringing the next generation of chefs through. Um, I could sit here going on, you know, for quite a long time really about this, you know, um, but you know. I think we've had a lot of change in our industry, you know, over the years, certainly for the better. Um, I think, you know, there used to be a time when kitchen used, used to be quite aggressive, mm. um, for sure, no doubt about it. And I think over the years that has not, that has changed. It's, it certainly can't be tolerated. Um, the kitchen should be happy places to work. You understand? You should be able to go there, enjoy your work, work as a team. Okay, all work for for common goal without, you know, sometimes going to the kitchen maybe, you know, feeling fearful for yourself like it used to be um, yeah. in some places um, but I think we're making inroads into that really um, ultimately but just just more of a, a dedication to learn you know to practicing our craft again like, like we were taught you know when we were at college you know. Perfect so um, can you go through a little bit about where you're currently working and obviously it's in a bit of a hiatus at the moment but yes. 
but just the the kind of plans you've got moving forward so yeah i'm currently in, in kent now Tavisham, um at a place called reed's restaurant and rooms um working with david and rona pitchford um who have had reeds for over 43 years now um and they're very well respected within within our industry um and you know i've known david and rona for a few years now especially you know um, when i met david when i um took part and I, was, and I was awarded the master of culinary arts you know um some years ago really um so you know i've always known about reeds being a very sort of small sort of independent family run restaurant we've got six bedrooms here um got a lot of history and, and a lot of reputation you know being a, a nice place you know over the years you know and um i just felt that being up here now i wouldn't say it's a finishing school for me but i would i wouldn't be too far off from that basically you know i've always wanted to sort of leave london at some stage and work somewhere and be somewhere where it was a lot sort of smaller and i can really just sort of kind of focus on um imprinting my style of cooking um and hospitality you know in a place like here you know and i think you know myself and david and rona we have a very similar sort of ethos about food in terms of you know quality ingredients led um seasonality simple cooking so you know hopefully when we reopen again and we can just continue to um focus on 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 those things here and sort of almost reinvigorate reeds again um to a cert certain degree as well so uh, i'm very you know excited about being up here and um i think we can continue to do wonderful things up here in due course and uh obviously you've uh, now started to appear a little bit on television and, and bits and pieces like that yeah, yeah. How, how's that been because it's a chefs are, are they often have quite big egos and things like that whilst they're in the confines and the security of their own kitchen but to yeah. put yourself out in the public and things like that has that been tough or is it um, something you, you're not saying i've got a big ego you know are you no no, no <laughs> we, all, we all have <laughs> no no not at all no i mean listen i think you know you know me doing a bit of tv work really is just a consequence of you know sometimes being in the right place at the right time um you know i think you know my pedigree and i said that in a, in a very humble fashion um in, in terms of my career to date you know some of the stuff that i've placed that i've worked on and awards that i've won kind of helps you you know in certain situations you know to to be able to do these sort of things really you know so i mean we just finished filming as an example the the last second episode of like beat the chef uh, which we shown on channel four you know i think next month or the month after really so um i think with tv work you know i enjoy i enjoy doing it you know i think um some people may may be phased by that but i think my character and how i am as a person um i think it lends itself quite well they tell me to to to, to being on tv to, to to do that really i feel that i'm i'm a fairly competent person and within myself you know um i believe in myself you know um i like to have fun i don't take myself too seriously um and you know i suppose sometimes maybe you know people see that and think oh yeah he, he might work on this particular show but ultimately at the end of the day yeah uh, uh, people shouldn't lose track of certain things you know you, you do tv work because obviously it's a bit of an extra okay but the only reason why i'm doing it is because i think you know i'm doing all right or i've done okay in my chosen profession yeah. um, at the end of the day you know at the end of the day I'm a, I'm a chef first and foremost nothing else that's what i know how to do that's what i want to do in terms of doing a bit of tv work that's just a byproduct of that basically really at the end of the day so if i'm going to go and do a tv program you know based around food i want to make sure first and foremost i'm not there showing myself off i'm there trying to show what i've learned what i can do what i can educate and what i can teach people you know in terms of what i'm cooking um so um that really is all i would say really on that but yeah uh, it's a bit fun i mean absolutely i, I think the, probably the, the scariest thing about doing that is actually you you're opening yourself out to to other people to comment and criticize for so you've sure got to, you've got to have that confidence in yourself yeah so. you have to you have to basically yeah. you know and um you know like i said i don't take myself too seriously at the end of the day you know, so you know i've got big enough shoulders to take anything that comes Fantastic. my way so. so in terms of if if uh, we get a lot of students who uh who start on the course and say uh their ultimate ambition is to to own their own business mm -hmm. so how much kind of experience and um how many years under your belt do you reckon someone needs to to have the confidence <laughs> and, and skill set to do that? Um, I suppose it, you know, I suppose it depends really. I suppose from you know 
person to person, depending on their circumstance, I would say. Um, I certainly would say, you know, having a good decade behind you, um, depending on when you start, you know, um, gives you, you know, is a good ballpark figure, you know. Um, certainly maybe some people can, you know, move a lot quicker than that in terms of maybe their experience, uh, maybe their, their skill set is quite advanced for their age and stuff like that, really. But I would say a, a good decade behind you, you know, trying to build up your, your reputation, your skill set, um, and I think that's why sometimes competitions can actually help you do that, especially the ones that are very reputable and ones that are really much in the sort of public's eye. Because, you know, when you do certain competitions, you know, um, they can give you a bit more, maybe a bit more coverage than something else than, than another one, really, you know. Um, and that can also help you when you want to go into maybe doing your own business. Um, you've got something to sort of, you know, people can talk about, well, this is the new chef of the year or the Ruth scholarship winner you know so i would say a good sort of decade behind you you know is um is a good one to start with i would say okay okay and obviously um we, we had a bit of a chat yesterday about um where we're at at the moment so everyone's in lockdown and um the kind of frustrations is there anything you could advise the students to be uh, doing to kind of keep their learning going to keep their yeah. skills <clears throat> I mean, I can only talk about what I'm particularly doing now, now myself, really, you know. Now what I'm doing myself is that, you know, I'm just just focusing on um, doing some recipe development, you know. So I'm just trying to say to myself in my head, okay, when are we going to get out of this at some stage? So I'm working on new recipes and new ideas. Basically, I'm using that time for that. Um, I'm, I'm looking at stuff in terms of what I've done in the past, um, reminiscing about, you know, in terms of, you know, my career, you know, looking at old photographs and... Um, what good turn I made or what bad turn that I made basically at the same time. So just sort of recapping a little bit, you know, on things. Uh, I'm trying to keep myself as fit as I possibly can, you know, um, in terms of exercise and, you know, and going for little runs here and there. No more than half an hour, mind you, okay, <laughs> um, at the same time. But for me, mainly it's about, you know, doing a bit more cooking at home as well now, you know, um, with the family, um, experimenting on a few dishes as well at the same time. So. You know, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing around home, it's still, you know, you know, cooking based, really, you know, what I mean, whether it's reading books, writing recipes, um, you know, cooking at home. So you just got to keep yourself ticking over. I mean, it's not easy. And we all know that, obviously. But um, last thing we can we can do is just wake up in the morning, sit on the couch all day long and then go back to bed again, can't we? We can't do that. So Absolutely. Uh, and it, it, for me, it's totally about um, the, the positivity of your mind and uh, in terms of we're never going to get a chance like this to actually reflect on what we really want to be doing and, no, and where, no. where where our lives are going to take us so For sure. we, we live in a kind of society which is really busy uh, which really pushes you to work and and get on with things so actually to to have this opportunity to to consider where you want to head is, yeah. is quite a strong powerful thing it is it is it really is you know we should really use this time very wisely and, and really ask ourselves what do we want to do where do we want to go from here because things are going to change dr dramatically what well, they have already but they will change dramatically when we finally do get out of where we're, what, what we're in right now and um, I think that's something that we will have to be prepared for and the best that we possibly can and um, it's almost like setting up some new goals almost really you know mm. um, and that's um, the way that I'm kind of looking at it as well really. Yeah and do you, do you think this could have a profound impact on the way restaurants operate and, and businesses? Oh. Oh, most, most definitely. I, I think, you know, even prior to this situation, you know, I think um, restaurants were already in a situation of looking at how they operate in terms of staffing, staffing costs and stuff like that, um, suppliers, um, you know, a lot, there's, there's lots of different things. I think now when we do finally get out of here, I think, you know, restaurants and hotels, whatever, are going to be a lot more vigilant in terms of how they go about one, just spending their money first and foremost because we don't want to be back in this situation ever again obviously okay um i think um you know restaurants are going to be probably a little bit, little bit more selective in terms of you know people that they have within their within within establishments um you know i, I just think there's a lot more tighter controls will just sort of come into place um you know the hygiene side of things as well would go up it's going to go up tenfold you know it was already something that already was changing dramatically i think that's going to continue to, to be the case um i think that's how we are individually as people 
to one another um, is going to change a lot as well, really. Um, and I, I think for the better, I hope for the better. Mm. And, and also, you know, I think we mentioned this the other day, I think some of these restaurants out there that probably, you know, um, I wouldn't say shouldn't be there. Um, but we're having a bit of a cull now, aren't we? There's a bit of a cull really sort of going on, you know, um, inadvertently, you know. And, um, you know, whether that's a good thing or not, people put that up for debate. Um, but I certainly believe that, you know, people are going to be paying a lot more attention to their business on the whole than ever before, basically, really. Nothing will be taken for granted anymore. Brilliant. OK, so uh, kind of last opportunity that we've asked the question. So if anyone else has got any pressing ones, you've got a few seconds to, to chuck anything in that you'd like. Um, but certainly from our, our point of view, we really appreciate your your time with us today, Freddie. It's um, it's great that I mean it's the same as what you were saying with the Roo scholarship. You're you're part of the family for Westminster as much as as anything, and and we're we're really proud and thankful for for your time today. So, well, I appreciate it. I mean, for me, you know, like I said, I'll never forget where I came from. You know, um, so you know, and you know, I think you guys all know that. You know, um, and you know, I'll forever will be a a, a West King. Um, that that's that's for sure. I mean, certainly without without Westminster, my career would not have turned out. And I'm happy how my career is turning out, you know, and what I've done over the years. But it would not have been the way that it had been if I hadn't gone to Westminster. That's just a really clear of day for me. Um, maybe at the time I never realised that, um, but I certainly do certainly do realise now. Um, so thank you very much. Yeah, you're most welcome. We'd love to have you come back to us anytime, anytime. Brilliant. All right, anytime. top man. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Tuning in. All right. Thank you.